and we are on filmsgonewild.com. My name is John Wildman. We are going to talk about the film Vinyl Nation, uh, which is screening at the San Luis Obispo Film Festival. Um, we've got Kevin Smokler and, and Christopher Boone, co-directors on the film. Guys, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks for having us, John. Yeah, thank you. Okay, we always start off with having our filmmakers introduce our audience who have not seen the film as yet. What is Vinyl Nation about? Uh, Vinyl Nation is a feature-length documentary film about the comeback of records over the last 15 years in America, the connective power of music, and the an old medium becoming new again to a brand new generation. All right. Um, I am in a house that every room has Blu-rays and DVDs and books and CDs and, yes, LPs. It's a, it's a media warehouse uh, here in Dallas. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, I'm, I'm recording from my 60s, 70s room. And, uh, and so for fun, I just picked out a random assortment. Um, so we've got uh, Tom Jones. Uh, You're here. the second person to show us that particular Tom Jones album. Ah, today, yeah, today. Yeah. Uh, the Worst of Jefferson Airplane. Sure. Of course. Ray Charles doing his thing. Ah, good one. Good right? one. Uh, everything is everything by Diana Ross. And back mm. in the day, that was a dollar ninety nine. Mm -hmm. Diana Ross, uh, Lou Rawls, all things, huh? And then we'll from finish the great city of Chicago. Exactly, and we'll finish with Engelbert Humperdinck. Yes. <laughs> all right. <laughs> now, just now, I just distracted you for a moment. Um, but what I want you guys to talk about, because you're co-directors on this project, and I would love to have both of you talk about how you divvied up responsibilities. Who did what on this show? <laughs> oh, okay. So we just divvied it up right there. I go first. Um, <laughs> so this is Chris. Um, so I uh, came to this project with a background in making films. Uh, I've done short films. I've done a feature narrative. Uh, I've, I write. I wrote that script, um, but I'd never made a documentary. I figured at some point in time I would, um, but I didn't know when or, or about what. Um, Kevin and I went to college together. We're two years apart, so we knew each other that way. And Kevin's a writer of books, um, and specifically around a lot of it around pop culture. We connected on a book tour of his uh, for a book that he wrote called um, Brat Pack America, a love letter to 80s teen movies. I live in Albuquerque. He lives in the Bay Area. When he finished his book, he was reaching out to people. Hey, could I come to your town if you're interested? Maybe we can do something on my book tour. And I said, oh, why don't we do a screening of a, you know, a John Hughes movie at our local indie art house cinema. And then afterwards, I'll do a Q&A with you and we'll sell some books. And it went really, really well. And we did that like three or four times. Um, and then after several of those sessions, Kevin's like, hey, listen, I have this idea for a documentary. It's about records and the resurgence of records, but I don't really know how to make movies and you do. And I said, well, I don't know how to make documentaries, but I'm, I'm curious. And I, and I recently got back into records and he had been back into records. And so that's the idea came from Kevin. And then it, it, we just spent a lot of time working together doing the research phase of things and kind of fast forward to the actual production on set. Kevin did all the interviews on camera and I wrangled things in the background. Um, I would do all the data transfers. I was in charge of logistics, uh, handling the schedule, um, that kind of stuff. And then when we got to post-production, we worked with a fantastic editing team out of Austin. Um, and that's kind of when we both, again, uh, joined forces, working with that team and putting all of our ideas together, kind of taking the original outline, taking our editor's ideas and putting those all together. Kevin, what are some of the other things I totally missed in that answer? Uh, Chris likes to say that that I have the questions and he has the answers. No, you like to say that. You <laughs> like to say that. <laughs> uh, because I'm usually the person's I'm usually the person with the ideas and Chris is the person who knows how to implement them. And um, so or the other way, Chris, maybe this is more fair. Chris, you like to say I'm front of house and you're back of house. I like and, to say that. That's right. Yeah, you got yeah. that right. <laughs> um, so it was and it's part of the reason we we discovered we work well together is we're each we're each strong where the other person isn't and vice versa and um, uh, but it was clear like I, I think it was clear to both of us that in the course of doing the movie we were going to the the essential responsibilities would in the end be divided pretty equally and so that's why we're co-directors and co-producers on it like that was that was to, to us that was the most accurate reflection of 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 who had done what share of the work and it was it was pretty much divided right down the middle. Um, okay, well, now here's, here, now this is a question that I love asking documentarians, and it is this. You know, oftentimes we start off with an idea of what the movie is going to be, 
or what our intention is. And then sometime, either during interviews, during uh, get, getting footage, sometimes it's in the editing bay, um, a filmmaker, in your case, filmmakers go, oh, this is the movie. This right here is the movie. <laughs> so I, it's your eureka moment as a filmmaker. So I would love for you know both of you or one of you, what was the eureka moment for Vinyl Nation? I think like we, we were very fortunate. Our post-production team, uh, Jason Welling and David Fabello were uh, people that a, 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 a friend of ours, uh, an advisor on the movie had introduced us to. And they actually said just what you just said to us. Uh, we were talking to them and they said, listen, you got a lot of footage here. Uh, we're going to look through it. And um, we'll, but we'll just warn you what you think is the movie is probably not the movie. The movie is the, the, the actual movie is in there somewhere. And we didn't believe them for a second. We were like, we, we were like, are you kidding? We just spent six months filming it. Of course we know what the movie is. And they were like, oh, young child, please. <laughs> <laughs> please have a say. And they're like, fine, fine. You know, we, we, we've been here before with inexperienced documentarians. And, and they, were, they were absolutely right. Uh, um, Chris, do you want to talk about like what we thought we were doing? And sure. what we yeah, yeah, yeah. We, but when we, before we started interviewing, we put together our one page pitch and it was essentially a series of album tracks. And there were all the different areas that we wanted to cover um, in the course of the film. And then we crafted interview questions that fell into each of those tracks. And then we would organize our interviews based on, okay, these people we think will fit into each in these tracks. So we got to make sure we ask them the questions from those tracks and then anything specific to that individual. And then Kevin, as the experienced interviewer that he is, is picking up on what people are saying and, and drilling down deeper for, for each of them there. But then when we gave over the footage, like you said, to or to our editors, you know, it was very early on as Jason was going through all of it, was said, you know, I think, I think what you guys have here, I think the movie that you've made is one about human connection. And we should have been tipped off at the end of our first week of shooting. Um, it's, it's my favorite scene in the film. It's the scene that we knew from the outset, from the day we shot it. We knew this was going to be in the movie. And our editors, when they saw it, they're like, they cut a scene together as soon as they saw it, because they knew it was going to be in the movie. And it's the penultimate scene in the movie with Ashley Ann Craigbaum answering the question, like, what what do you want to have happen to your records when you're gone? And um, I don't think any of us expected how emotional that scene was going to be. And all of us had a moment in the room together, so much so that I won't spoil it for you, but there is a literal moment of human connection on film in that scene at the end. Um, and I just remember saying when we cut, I was off camera and I just remember saying to Ashley Ann, thank you for sharing that story. Like I. I completely just didn't expect it. And then when I talked to my wife on the phone that night, I was like, oh, I, I wasn't sure. It was the last day of filming our first week. And I said, I, I think we're going to have something good. Like, I think this movie's going to be good. But it's still, I still did not know we were making a movie about human connection, <laughs> even though I just had the moment of human connection. So um, you just never know, honestly, until it all gets laid out. What I do find interesting, though, is I can still see the skeleton of our original outline in the background of our movie. Like it didn't dictate the edit, but like once our editors came to us with the, what they thought the, the movie flow should be, we then had the conversation in the back and forth. And so you see this excellent hybrid, this nice melding of, of those ideas. And then again, best idea wins. Whatever's gonna tell the story the best ultimately wins. And so I was just really happy to work with creative people like Jason and David who are fantastic storytellers themselves and just really could shepherd us through that process. I love the editing process too. So I love like sitting there with them and letting them kind of go through it and then be like, oh wait, hold on. What if we, we bumped it up this way? Can you try that, try this? And I just find that fascinating. Well, I think, one of the, I think one of the beauties of the film is that, <clears throat> as I was describing it, I said, listen, it delivers, Vinyl Nation delivers exactly what you want it to deliver and what you're hoping they'll deliver, but it also gives you that extra stuff that you just described. And, and that's the thing where you go, you know, anybody like, you know, reading the log line or seeing the poster image, you know, and, and you know, and deciding to, you know, that person is going to be taken care of. You guys are going to take care of them there, you know, and, and, but the person that isn't necessarily laser beaming their way into the film, I think you're going to get that person too, because of those moments that you actually described. Uh, just really well done, guys. Um, Thank you. The, Thank the you. film is Vinyl Nation, again, screening at San Luis Obispo International Film Festival uh, on a, a tour, a very solid film festival tour. 
uh, for the film. And we've been talking to the directors, Christopher Boone and Kevin Smokler. Guys, thank you for being on the show. Uh, you're welcome, John. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks, John. Appreciate it.